Okay, okay. Assalamu alaikum, shalom, shalom. Greetings, dear beloved brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, and all of you around the world and wherever you are viewing another episode of the Image a Nation show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much, dear brothers and sisters. Thank you to all of you who are regular viewers of the Image a Nation show. Thank you for being here once again with us on this program, which we dedicate each and every Thursday evening, starting at 6.30. I think we're probably just around uh, 30 seconds late uh, this week um, getting started. But uh, welcome, dear family. Welcome to all. Um, please, at this time, contact somebody. Let them know that the Image a Nation show is live on YouTube and also on Zoom. You are most welcome and we are very happy, privileged to have once again the opportunity to come into your places of abode wherever you may be uh, viewing this particular broadcast, dear family. Thank you for tuning in. Let me see uh, what's going on here. For some reason, I have lost my other camera, but uh, this will have to do uh, for the time being. Okay, so as always, uh, with the show, you know, it's a continuation from last week and the week before that. But as always, uh, dear viewers, we want you to know that our purpose, our intention is to really try to spark imagination. Okay, that's why our show is called Image a Nation. We want to spark your imagination because we know that imagination is part of that creative process that every human being possesses inherently within their being. But if we are not careful, then what happens is that when you live in a system like the current one that exists planet-wide, uh, imagination can be dulled, in, in, imagination can be stifled, imagination can be curtailed to such a degree that people are no longer able to think outside of a box that has been placed around the mind so that one is actually imprisoned in the ability to be able to see beyond what the powers that be and in truth what the enemy desires for us to see. And so therefore, imagination is really an attempt to get people to really begin to see things for themselves to be once again to be able to employ that image and nation that imagination to be able to go deep into the thought process and be able to see beyond what we have been presented thus far every person has this ability okay the, there's a scripture that says, as a man thinketh, and of course, when it says man, it's talking also about woman. As a man, as a woman thinketh in his heart, so is he. In her heart, so is she. Okay, and again, even the heart, it's not necessarily talking about this flesh heart beating within our chest, but it's talking about the center, the heart, the, the place where, you know, we place all of our love and all of our trust and all of our th uh, thought process in that heart, in that center, so we are, so we will be. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, okay? And this is important, uh, dear family, that we don't lose sight of the fact that, okay, you know, some uh, YouTube channels and some of the people out there, of course, they're uh, really trying to entertain. And I, I don't have any problem with people uh, going online and trying to entertain other people. And some people are about education. I, I really want us to appreciate that from, from my perspective, from the perspective of imagination, it is very much about 
education. It is very much about enlightenment. It is very much about the uplift of humanity, giving people the opportunity to move from where they are to a better place, to move and to become more proactive, to become more self-determined in terms of what they can achieve in life. And so that's our objective, uh, dear brothers and sisters. And so whilst, once again, you know, in beginning uh, this show, I say welcome to episode 34, okay, part four of the Imagination Show entitled The Wheel Above Top Secret. Now, you know, again, this is the, the fourth episode of this particular series that we're dealing with, and uh, I really don't see how I'm going to be able to complete uh, what I want to complete this evening. So it may very well be that there'll be a fifth. It may not be, but we will see. Uh, dear family, I'm not rushing. I'm not in a great hurry uh, because I believe that the information is so important that we need to take time in order to get it across to the audience. Last week, dear family, we focused almost exclusively on the movie Space Traders and the idea and concept of the arrival of some massive spaceships containing uh, humanoid aliens offering a deal to the white power structure for the removal of all black people to a possible better place. Now, you know, those of you who were here, you'll remember um, that movie that we looked at. And it's a very powerful movie because in truth, so much of it pertains to scripture, so much of it pertains to the reality of our experience as a people in the Western Hemisphere, uh, having uh, been a people who have been through 400 years of absolute hell, absolute torture, absolute genocide. This is the reality of what those of us who are part of the black community have endured. And therefore, you know, um, we looked at that uh, movie with the scriptures in mind and with this desire that we as a people have for a better way, a better life, a more uh, productive and decent existence and one free of oppression. And so therefore, you know, we looked last week at the kind of dilemma that many of our people found themselves in having an opportunity to leave. But at the same time, you know, uh, many uh, having some type of uh, vested interest in where they are. And oftentimes that vested interest is only because we are familiar with that. We've become used to a particular thing. Did you know that you can grow used to prison? And this is where you get the term institutionalized. Okay, you can get used to anything. All right. And some people are so used to being uh, prisoners. Some people are so used to being uh, in captivity that captivity becomes a way of life. OK, poverty becomes a way of life and we can't necessarily see ourselves living any different lifestyle. And so we uh, say things like better the devil, you know. I mean, literally, this is where the, these types of sayings come from. Better the devil, you know. So, you know, we, 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 we will always just, we, we, we'd rather stay with a devil, okay, than take a chance of being with God. Because, of course, we've been blinded to the reality of God. And so, therefore, you know, we think that the devil is the only game in town. Dear family, if you go to the book of Luke, chapter 21 verse 27 it says and then shall they see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory my goodness dear family it's so strange because i know people read these scriptures and they imagine i don't know they imagine a man in a cloud maybe with some kentucky fried chicken wings on his back or something like that but they don't actually appreciate that this power 
is talking about a vehicle manifest power that the one the son of man when he comes that's what you will see something really powerful okay something really glorious something that you know this world would absolutely marvel at would swoon at would faint at when you go to your bible and you read more into these scriptures you'll find that it, it talks about that it talks about people fainting it talks about people literally you know uh being in awe you know falling to their knees and bowing down and there's a scripture that says in that day, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord. This is the reality of what the scriptures are talking about, uh, dear family. Uh, this is an artist impression of a baby wheel. But, you know, make no mistake about it. This is our subject. We're dealing with the wheel. We're dealing with the wheels. And this is uh, something that we must become familiar with uh, in order to understand what the scriptures are talking about and what we are about to see if we have not already seen some of these wheels and ultimately that mothership uh, when it manifests itself we don't care we know we don't care that there are those who would want to ridicule us who would want to laugh and make mockery and say ah these people are crazy man they're tin foil wearing hat tinfoil hat wearing people and all the rest of the stuff we've heard it all we've heard it all beloved but you know again i say some of us are so primitive honestly we're so backward in our thought process that we cannot even begin to imagine anything outside of this uh false and fake reality that our enemies have placed us in but you know, again, this is the difference, I guess, between one who is a believer and one who is a disbeliever. This is the difference between one who knows and one who spends his life guessing about life. Uh, OK, and so, you know, this is just where we are at the present time in the world. And we can't, I, you know, despite the fact that you know, uh, as a, a, a baby believer in the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and a member of the Nation of Islam, yes, I'm happy, man, that I've been blessed to be in that place, in that position, knowing what I know now. But at the same time, I can't be happy and, and because I know something and other people don't, which is why I do what I do, dear family, because I believe that everybody deserves the chance everybody deserves the opportunity to know this truth and then of course you know the thing that god gave to every single human being that he didn't give to the creatures that he didn't give to the plants and the trees and you know so on and so forth the thing that he gave all of us is the power of choice and so in the end you know the job is to give a clear word and then for people to make their choice this week we are asking how many of us really 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 i've written it once but i'm saying it three times how many of us really listen to and analyze the news carefully to understand what's going on and it's hidden and is hidden in plain sight but because of the music Okay, because you know, some of these news things, they've got music playing in the background, dear family. Because of the music, the smirking, you see the so-called newscaster, as he's telling you the story, he's got this stupid smirk on his face. In other words, don't believe what I'm saying, because what I'm saying to you is rubbish. I'm only reporting it because I've been told to report it, but really it's a big joke. So the smirking, the light-heartedness, sometimes they give these news reports and it's so light-hearted it's so flippant that you again the, the the signal that is being sent is you know whatever you do don't take what we're saying seriously the making fun and the seeming playfulness okay where the, the, the there's this banter going on between the anchors on the news you know because of course this is the fun part of the news this is the the bit that you know we want to make mockery of but in reality, you know, they're actually telling you something that you ought to be actually taking careful note of because within all of that 
smirking, lightheartedness, banter, playfulness, etc. There is some serious truth, man, that is being disguised. We often miss the serious nature of what is actually being admitted. Okay, family? So at this time, we want to look at uh, one of these typical uh, news reports uh, in order for us to really appreciate what I'm saying. Because, again, you, you may not have really noticed um just how they do this but um they do it all the time and if you're not careful you fall right into the trap of not taking what's been said very seriously several former u.s air force officers have shared that almost 70 years ago they witnessed multiple unidentified aerial phenomenon sightings over i hope you got that number okay 70 years ago this is not just talking about the recent things you see these, these are former air force officers who are bearing witness that these things have been going on now for over 70 years all right it's significant because of the length of time that the teachings of the most honorable elijah muhammad has been taught their family so just again this is what i'm saying i want you to really listen carefully and analyze what's actually being said two U.S. nuclear bases. Shockingly, the men also claimed that these 1964 aerial sightings occurred nearly simultaneously with the spontaneous immobilizing of the base's nuclear intercontinental ballistic missiles. Did you hear that? Okay. These sightings coincide with the disablement of the intercontinental ballistic missiles on these air bases that these sightings were seen over their family okay i just want you to understand that we're, we're not dealing here with some little green men from mars what we're dealing with here is the power of almighty god allah okay to interfere with satan's plans and satan's behavior right here on earth okay and both satan and god are human beings all right, just, just so that we be clear, because we don't want to get into this um, fairy tale world that we have been placed in for so long. We're trying to extricate ourselves from the fairy tales and from the cartoons and come right up into the reality of life, dear family. Please listen. Suggesting that whatever or whoever was up there successfully disabled the ICBMs from above. Friend of the show, Emily Jashinsky, attended a Tuesday press conference held at the National Press Club in Washington, where a panel of former USAF officers detailed those incidents and others like them. According to Emily's reporting, the group called for congressional investigations into the sightings and said they felt they had been ignored. I mean, I, I, I wonder if I can read this. It says, panel of former Air Force officers involved in UAP, unidentified aerial phenomena, incidents at nuclear bases and test sites calls for congressional hearings says recent videos released by the navy were game changing one panelist says the question is a matter of survival okay they all feel they've been ignored okay these are uh united air force united states air force air force personnel who feel like this is a matter of life and death and that it needs now to be taken more seriously. Here we go. Previously, one former officer told the debrief at the event, quote, now the question is, will the government tell us the truth about what they've known now for decades? So uh, look, obviously there, I tend to be more skeptical, I think, than anyone else involved in producing this show for our i want you to the devil who's talking i want you to look at his face because you know he's typical. this is what i'm saying about the, the smirking and the trying to belittle and make make light of what is on the discussion this is these are these are trained deceivers all right to really make people to think that okay you know maybe this is the time in your home when this is on where you go and make a cup of tea rather than this is the time when you should be absolutely laser beam focused on your television screen in order to understand the game that's been played or the deception that's been played on the people 
viewers that aliens are real and doing things. Uh, I, I do think they're China, Russia, you know, other other governments with technologies or that have been a little ahead of ours that we've been different, not understood. That is is a reality. I don't know about the aliens, but what do you think, Kim? Well, I, I mean, look, this has been reported on for a long time, over a decade. There are these um, many other people, Robert Hastings, Dr. Stephen Greer, they have been bringing up the the sightings and, and witnesses to these sightings and the fact that there have been numerous accounts from some of our top military officials, people that we've trusted with nukes. I mean, if we trust them with nukes, they're clearly not crazy people. See, this this lady, she she's a lot more serious. She's taking it serious. She's saying, well, if, if these people, if these reports are coming from people that we trust with nuclear weapons. OK, these are clearly not stupid or crazy people. You know, we ought to be taking them serious when they talk to us about these UAPs or UFOs and, the, and what these uh, UFOs and UAPs are doing over military sites. OK, she's the serious one on the panel. Well, while the other one, the first one that was talking, is really there to try and, uh, you know, debunk or make it sound like a big joke. And they have uh, they have been testifying, saying that, look, there is something is blowing up nukes out when we when we send them out into space. They're getting blown up, essentially, or they're being disabled. Are you listening, family? Do you understand that these people have been sending nuclear missiles out into space because they see you, do, do you remember star wars not not the not the television show star wars but the star wars program that ronald reagan when he was president uh, began which is like a, a a kind of defense shield that they wanted to create to protect themselves from intercontinental ballistic missiles that possibly could come from Russia or come from China or, or, or North Korea or some other nuclear power. That's what they told the public. But in reality, dear family, th this uh, defense shield was somehow to try to protect them from the so-called unidentified flying objects. These vehicles, which are, I'm going to try and find a video which I, I, I had, but I don't know where it went to, but um, where you actually see the curvature of the Earth, uh, uh, something that's filmed from space, and you see the curvature of the Earth, and then you see a light, like a little vehicle moving very slowly along uh, the, the horizon of the curvature of the Earth, and then you see something coming up very fast out of the Earth's atmosphere, towards this vehicle then the vehicle stops and flies away fast in the opposite direction did you know that these people are constantly trying to shoot down baby wheels or even trying to attack the mothership and they can't they can't touch it but that there is a war that is constantly going on between god and satan where satan believes that he can challenge god himself and beat him this is real I know you don't appreciate it, but I'm telling you, dear family, this is a thing that's ongoing. Okay, and these people are actually sending nuclear devices out and they're getting destroyed. Somebody is destroying them when they go into space because we don't want that rubbish and that nastiness in space. Somebody is disabling their nuclear weapons on the ground, electronically. And these things happen when the so-called UFOs are around. I just want us to think, uh, dear family, as we continue to listen. Um, our nuclear facilities are being disabled. And this is something that has been reported by not only the United States, but other nuclear countries as well. And their thinking is that there is something out there that is an alien, uh, you know, not of this world life form that is monitoring. The Stop it. It's not alien. It's not otherworldly out of this world. It's from here. OK, the people are human beings. We call them scientists, we call them angels, and we know that the one who sits in authority and power over them, those 
persons, those people who operate these machines is God himself. God himself, who is a man, a human being, the supreme being, dear family. Does it, does it really sound that strange to you? That God is real? Imagine billions of people praying to a God who does not exist. Just think about it, man. Wow. They say, they say that these that these um, the monitoring of the nukes and the disabling of the nukes happened since the U.S. dropped the nukes, two of them on Japan. And the theory is that that event um, resonated out in the universe and some and the more intelligent life form says, what the heck are those humans doing? And they came down, at, you know, and they were monitoring us and they said, OK, you guys are dangerous because whatever it is you're doing is dangerous for the universe, not just for your your space in the world uh, or in the universe. And and they started to monitor and start to disable. And since then, whenever we've put nukes out there, in, you know, out into space, they've things have happened. I mean, dear family, uh, did, did you hear uh, I, I lost the, the actual video? I'm going to get it back. Did you hear what she said? That since they dropped those two nuclear weapons on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, that's when they, they you know, the, the activity of the so-called UFOs intensified. This world life form that is monitoring the United States, they say that these, that these, um, the monitoring of the nukes and the disabling of the nukes happened since the U.S. dropped the nukes, two of them on Japan. And the theory is that that event um, resonated out in the universe and some and the more intelligent life form says, what the heck are those humans doing? And they came down. The more intelligent life form being God himself. There's a scripture that says that the evil, their evil, their wickedness has reached all the way onto heaven. That their behavior stinks in the nostrils of God. Imagine, imagine. Uh, the Hiroshima bomb at the point when it exploded I think they said in excess of 150,000 people died immediately this is not you know talking about the aftermath now and the radiation poisoning and and the nuclear rain and all of these kind of things that come about in the aftermath and then the babies being born disabled and you know generations and generations of people suffering as a result of that nuclear blast the destruction of the properties and the incineration of um, the city i mean and then the americans having done that to hiroshima they said oh it works it's beautiful let's do it again they used the excuse that they had to nuke Japan because the, Jap the Japanese wouldn't surrender and therefore, you know, this is their answer to force the Japanese to surrender. Look, dear family, this is so wicked what was done that God himself decided to intervene, okay, because... These people have been given a certain amount of time to rule on our planet. But once they get to a point now where they start to threaten the heavenly realm, the heavenly body, when they start to threaten now that their evil is not confined just to themselves, but it's going to spread and maybe become something that becomes universal. No. Listen to what she's saying about what they have monitored, what they've been able to see as a result of their dropping a nuclear device on uh, two nuclear devices on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And um, resonated out in the universe and some and the more intelligent life form says, what the heck are those humans doing? And they came down, at, you know, and they were monitoring us and they said, OK, you guys are dangerous because whatever it is you're doing is dangerous for the universe not just for your your space in the world uh, or in the universe and and they started to monitor and start to disable and since then whenever we've put nukes out there in, you know out into space they've 
things have happened. Uh, nuclear sites are being disabled. And so <laughs> you hear this isn't this isn't some uh, octopus squiggly alien. This is this is human beings, supreme being who has an interest in the affairs of human beings. Human beings are concerned about what other human beings do. The God that we claim to pray to is concerned about human behavior, human activity, disabling their nuclear systems, their family. You know, so those of us, you, again, if you remember, our great brother Robert Nestamali said, have no fear. He's talking to the original people. He's talking to the original man and woman. He's talking to black people, African people, talking to the suffering people, the, the people that were rejected, despised and rejected. He's talking to us. He's telling us, have no fear for atomic energy because none of them can stop the time. See? There's a time. They've been given a time to rule. Their time is up. And the time now is the time of the manifestation of God. Hence why more and more people are seeing these wheels. Because God is making himself known now. And it's his time now to take back the rulership and give it to a people who once ruled, but give it to a people now who we must qualify ourselves to be rulers. And to rule doesn't mean that we have to be like the former ruler who is wicked and evil. To rule, what's required now is a righteous bearing righteous conduct, moral correctness, dear family. And so I hope that you are understanding this message and it's coming across as I intend, which is just to be very, very clear. Uh, forgive my passion. I can't help myself. But, you know, this is so serious. And I, like I said there in, in what I wrote, you know, we, we, we don't watch the news, man, with the appropriate level of scrutiny, okay, and analysis. Because if we did, uh, and I'm not saying all of us, I'm sure there are some, uh, we would really pick up on the subtleties, on the nuances, on the, the things which are said in jest or in frivolity, and the things which are not said, the things which are left unsaid. There is so much, uh, dear family, that is going on that we need to analyze. This is something that some of the military officials are, are kind of trying to say, well, see, this is a, a, a national security problem, uh, you know, that there's somebody out there trying to mess with our nuclear arsenal. It seems to me that if there is out there, which I am one that believes that there's, of course, life forms out there in the world. I think it, there's no way we're alone. Um, if they are out there and they are disabling our nukes, they're not doing it because they're a threat to us. They're doing it because we're a threat to ourselves. And Did you hear that? <laughs> you know, imagine, see, if 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 God was some uh, some wicked God, then... Of course, he would have destroyed us so long ago. But the reality is that the real danger is from those who are currently ruling. And we have the evidence, <laughs> dear family. War after war after war after war. And right now, again, we're in another one. And it's going to escalate because that's the nature of the beast. But it's just important to appreciate uh, what she just said, which is that um, this is literally to protect humanity against itself, to protect us as well, the people of God, against those who are anti-God, anti-Christ, and are just creating mayhem on the planet with 
these weapons of mass destruction. Maybe we're a threat to some aspects of the universe. Ryan, do you think we've, we've angered the Galactic Federation and their... Uh... Well, I mean, I do think that the chance that we're the only... You see the smirk on his face? Do you think we've angered the Galactic Federation just trying to make jokes? planet that has ever created life forms is vanishingly small like what well, what well, like just the, the just the math on that given given this expansive size of the universe it seems hard to get your get your head around i do think hearings on this uh would be a way to build back some trust yeah like oh, hold open hearings no argument like, absolutely have hearings make <laughs> we know that our our government our security officials they know things that they don't share with us they should share them with us absolutely yeah, but no. Well, I and apparently, not, yeah. what they're sharing now is that they've known about this. That this is something that is documented. It's in our government, and now they're admitting it into the public. And these people, you know, these high-level military officials have been smeared as quacks for years. You know, we, like I said, we've trusted them with nuclear arsenal. And as soon as they open their mouths and say, "Hey, by the way, something weird happened," and there's many of, you know, many of them who have said this, suddenly they're smeared as, uh, you know, wackadoos that people shouldn't be taking seriously, uh, and. You know, that now they are finally being heard. Now they're finally being taken somewhat seriously because these reports are coming out. Maybe the aliens and told me to dismiss your concerns to keep you in the dark. Maybe you're an alien. See, again, the little devil's got to try and make a joke because she's been a little bit too serious in the middle there. She's making some serious points. So Satan's got to come in now and, uh, you know, try and uh, lighten it all up because, of course, we don't want the viewers to be taking this thing too serious. Yeah, yeah this could be. Yeah, well, that's more likely. I mean, <laughs> knowing Robbie. <laughs> but we do need more government transparency. That's always good. And yes, I, I mean, I, we can take seriously when, when, and also, you know, when pilots say they've seen things that don't make sense. Um, a lot of things, some things just don't really don't make sense, and there's not an obvious answer. And then eventually, hopefully, we learn the truth. We find out it's something we didn't think of. Um, you know, you think about that with. The weird mystery, like the, the Malaysian airplane or something, which what happened, people said that was aliens, had no idea how it could have disappeared, and then eventually the Atlantic, I think it was the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. So this is now designed to throw you completely off the scent now. You know, the Malaysian airline that disappeared, people said it was aliens, but then it turned out that it wasn't aliens. So this is now to just create confusion in the minds of the people because of course yeah people are claiming this is alien then it turns out it's not alien so you know this story you need to just basically treat it in the same manner this is very very clever stuff by the gate one of the these a lot of, a lot of these news people they are what you might call gatekeepers okay some really 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 good really thorough reporting honestly the best story i've ever read in my life about how probably the pilot crashed it intentionally as a kind of suicide. Um, so th that, you know, that was an example. Probably the pilot crashed the Malaysian airline intentionally, and it was possibly a suicide. See these people, they don't know, there's no actual facts, conjecture, but they just put it out there. And again, it's designed to create confusion of something they said well maybe this aliens because because we can't come up with an explanation that makes sense then eventually find out it it, it was something it was something well, within our capacity to understand and explain well let's put it this way if it isn't aliens then it is a foreign entity that is messing with our nuclear arsenal and that's obviously problematic and i don't know if yeah. we can assert that china or russia or any other world powers had that sort of capability since the 40s and 50s yeah yeah that's see she's trying to bring it back to reality okay China or Russia, but then if it is China or Russia, would they have had that capability since the 40s? Remember the dates, okay? Because this is, this is how long that these things have been going on in terms of sightings. This isn't something new, all right? And people have been reporting so-called UFOs, flying saucers, etc., etc. I say it's the aliens. The only way that the Soviet <laughs> Union might have had it would be spies, like moles inside that could like pull right the plug. right but yeah possibly but well, that would be it but yeah again. But another reason for hearings yeah definitely right. plenty of reason for hearing so no i'm totally for that um we gotta leave it there uh dear family all praise is due to the creator of the heavens and the earth it is such a blessing to be able to 
uh, share with you uh, some of these life-giving teachings. Uh, Brother Ilya Rashad Muhammad, is, uh, he appeared on the STEM Files. He is a student, student minister in the Nation of Islam, and uh, he is one of the great scientific teachers on the reality of the wheel, dear family. Uh, this evening, we will listen to some of his breakdown of the phenomena which main, uh, remains a mystery to this world, okay? And when I say it remains a mystery to this world, not necessarily all of the uh, movers and shakers in the world. Many of them know the reality, okay? Some of the top movers and shakers on this planet, uh, they know the reality of the wheel. When I say remains a mystery to the world, I'm talking about the people of the world, the, the general public, the masses. Most people really don't know uh, what's going on because at the end of the day, they have been deliberately misled. They've been deliberately fooled in terms of having any uh, degree of real understanding about what's going on with so-called UFOs or UAPs. The STEM Files is hosted by two scientist brothers, uh, Tariq and Jibril, and our clips are taken from a 2021 20, uh, show featuring brother Ilya Rashad Muhammad, and also bear in mind uh, what was said in the news clip, uh, dear family. Please bear those things in mind as we listen to brother uh, Ilya Rashad. Weird energy going on there. But uh, so, brother, brother Ilya, what what is what are your thoughts on this so-called truth embargo? What are, what is the what do you think is the primary purpose of the federal government just now trying to uh, release information or admit that we've been visited by quote unquote UFOs? Well, the fact is that there's always been a truth embargo. Mm. And that embargo has been placed on the nation of Islam in particular ever since the Honorable Elijah Muhammad brought the reality of this truth about these circular planes that they call UFOs to the world. This was in the early 1930s when it was Master Fadr Muhammad, who was the teacher of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the person responsible for these circular planes. It was he in the 19, early 1930s who pointed out these planes uh, to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and inculcated him with the firsthand details pertaining to these planes, where they come from, what they can do, who pilots them, where they were made, how they were made, the composition that they're made of. In fact, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that he personally knew some of those scientists who are people by the way who Come actually on. operate these circular planes that the world now calls ufos so mm. there's always been a truth embargo placed on the nation of islam particularly as it relates to the truth about these planes and of course history bears us witness because it was in 1942 when the FBI, the federal government, arrested the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and questioned him about these planes shortly after the U.S. military witnessed them for perhaps one of the first major times. So mm -hmm. yes, that's why the truth embargo has been in place. That's why there continues to be a tremendous sense of censorship aimed toward the nation of Islam and the truth we represent. Uh, and that truth leads directly to what the world calls the UFO phenomena. <laughs> yeah, dear brothers and sisters, I just want us to think about that, a truth embargo. All right, so, you know, at the end of the day, the nation has been teaching this since the 30s, since the 30s. But in truth, how many of you really know 
you know, about that? How many of you know the reality of the nation's teachings? Because it's been so obscured by accusations of racism and anti-Semitism and bigotry and you name it, we've been called the names, okay? And so the people don't even get a chance to really get into the reality of the teachings on the wheel, the teachings around these so-called UFOs, because it's a truth embargo, dear family. This is the reality. And, you know, we have to, as a people, recognize that, you know, uh, I, I think some people, some of us, we're, we're, I don't know if we're scared of the nation of Islam. I don't know if it's the word Islam that terrifies some of us and has us running in the opposite direction or running into walls. I don't know. But what I'm suggesting to you is that, you know, the nation is your best friend. I'm talking to original people. I'm talking to black people. I'm talking to Africans. The nation of Islam is your best friend. And I mean, again, just remember, Islam, when you translate it from Arabic into English, I mean, it's, 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 very, it's, it's a very powerful lot of meanings in truth. But one sim simple meaning of Islam is peace. Yeah, so we say our greeting is assalam alaikum salam peace be unto you islam means peace so when you say the nation of islam the nation of peace here we are members of the nation of islam did you know that we have a prohibition in the nation of islam against carrying weapons that we're not even allowed to carry a pen knife much less have a gun or some other weapon of mass destruction. Come on, man. I want you to think today. Because you've been hoodwinked into believing that the nation of Islam represents some violence and some violent people, but they can't show no history of us attacking one Jew. You know, because we're anti-Semitic, right? Come on, dear family. We're, we're, we're some fearless people. We don't really play. We, you know, so, so if we were, if that was a significant part of our teaching, if that was, if we were being taught to hate Jews and to hate uh, gay people and to hate all of these people we're accused of hating, why is it that you can't show one piece of evidence of one Jew or one homosexual being attacked by a member of the nation of Islam? Surely by now, come on over nearly a hundred years after the establishment of the nation, you would have something like that. I, I just want you to reason with me. Dear family, we just have to wake up, man, because somebody is playing a game on us. And that game is so serious that they have you running away from your own salvation. Brother Leo Muhammad is not a crazy person. I'm happy. And when you look at Brother Ilya Rashad and the two brothers sitting next to him, Brother Tariq and Brother Jabril, the, the smiles on our faces, man, because we, we know something, dear family. And we want you to know it too. Because knowing it is going to be your empowerment. That's the reality, dear brothers and sisters. That's the reality that the enemy desires for us not to know. So, brothers and sisters, uh, this is an image of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad handcuffed and under arrest in the 1940s, being taken into custody to be interrogated about the teachings given to him by Master Farad Muhammad, and in particular, the information about the wheel. I don't know if you can see down here the handcuffs. He's handcuffed to this devil, FBI agent, um, and he's been taken into custody okay this is the reality of what happened 
and you know when we tell you these um, stories about the reality of the nation and what people had to go through, what the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad had to go through in order to establish these teachings. It wasn't no kindergarten walk, okay? It wasn't no skipping through the tulips. This man suffered tremendously over many, many years, okay? Muslims died, okay? New followers to the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad lost their lives. Some of them were shot down in cold blood by the police because they were unarmed, okay, in order to establish this reality and this truth. And again, this is one of the reasons why me as an individual man, I'm so, I feel so privileged to have this opportunity just to be able to wear this name, Muhammad, my God. You know, when I, when I was blessed to receive that name in 1996, I believe it was, 1996 was when I got my Muhammad. I was so overcome and so overwhelmed by, you know, being given such a name, my goodness, by the Honourable Minister Louis Farquhar. I remember coming back to the UK and in those days, you know, I was this uh, so-called celebrity TV star being one of those uh, writers and performers in the iconic BBC television show, The Real McCoy. And I remember being interviewed by magazines and the newspaper and they were asking me, how does it feel? Because I was known up to that point as Leo Chester and then Leo X Chester, because there's a process that we go through when we join the nation uh, of, you know, renouncing the enemy's surname that he put on all of our people. And when they asked me the question, man, you know, how does it feel to uh, have this name, Muhammad, you know, uh, going through this name change? And what came into my mind immediately was I, 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 my answer, uh, in essence, was that I felt like a little child, small child, who had put on his father's overcoat, trench coat outside raincoat, uh, in other words, a big coat that is designed to go over a suit and, you know, the whole nine yards. I, I felt like a small child. And when I say a small child, I'm talking about maybe a child who can just about stand up and walk, putting on that big, massive coat so that then the arms and everything is just on the floor, Okay. There's no way that it remotely fits. I said, that's how I feel with the name Muhammad. That feels like something that it's going to take a long time to grow into. This is the reality, dear family, of being returned to our father's house, being returned to our nature, being returned to who we are as a people when we can once again wear the name of God. Imagine the meaning of the name Muhammad. It means one who is worthy of praise and one who is praised much. It's one of the, it, it doesn't come under the 99 attributes of God. It's one of the, it's a, it's a name that's outside of those 99 attributes. You could say it's the hundredth attribute of God. But the reality is that if Muhammad means one who is worthy of praise and one who is praised much, and any one of us who is a Muslim follower of the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and somebody says to us, oh, well done, Brother Leo, that was great, what you did, that job, oh, you know, the, the Image and Nation show is fantastic. Thank you so much for what you are doing. What's our response? Our response is, Alhamdulillah, or in English, all the praise belongs to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. We don't take the praise for ourselves, even though somebody may be praising us, we know that the praise belongs to Allah, which is why Muhammad is the name of God, because only Allah is worthy of praise and Allah is praised much. I hope, dear family, that you 
understand what we are trying to say to you this evening. I hope and pray that the message is clear because whether we again really appreciate it or not, a time is coming when these wheels are going to feature in all of our lives. There will be no one on this planet who will not experience one way or another the coming of God and the manifestation of his vehicles. Image and Nation promoting and advertising goods and services for the benefit of our community. Please take note of the following, dear family, and lend your support. Visit www.natureshairproducts.co.uk and try the beard oil, specially formulated hair butters, and so much more from Nature's Hair Products. Okay, visit the site and get yourself something natural and something good, dear family, for the growth and the health of your hair. WYLA for boys and girls aged 8 to 16. Producing our future leaders. Visit www.wylauk.com come dear family those of you who understand that the children are indeed our future it then should translate that we should invest in our children invest in our future give them an opportunity put them in to a saturday academy a school where they can get that extra curriculum that extra education that uh, guidance that would allow them to be able to navigate in a world like this where the schools uh, I have to be truthful to you we call them the killing fields because these schools are not necessarily designed to further our children and when you see black children doing exceptionally well in these environments in these schools it's not because of the school it's not because the school itself is necessarily good for our children it is because our children are genius it's because our children have within them a genius they have that god component that allows them to excel even in hell jj sorrel products dear family visit instagram and check out at sorrel 2020 and pick up your uh, sorrel drink and your sorrel jam and your sorrel cupcakes and enjoy dear family okay the concepts of science and religion or facts versus belief are usually depicted as two separate and distinct ideas at opposite ends of a spectrum at odds or in complete opposition to the other with no possibility of congruency or oneness leading to tremendous ignorance in the masses of humanity which suits the enemy's agenda. I hope you understood that. Okay, religion and science, they want you to believe that these are two opposing forces that these are diametrically opposed to one another they are not and believe it or not they are in fact one and the same dear family it's just like i said again that we have an enemy who is wickedly wise and is constantly feeding this type of ignorance and division to the people so that they think that you know there is this huge um, difference between belief and science when in reality again if you even, even if you go to the bible i think it's paul who gave, gives a definition of faith i think he says faith is the substance of things open hoped for the evidence of things unseen just listen faith is the substance of things 
hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. You know what the two critical words in that is? Listen to the words again. The substance of things hoped for. See, substance. In other words, we're talking about faith here. But there has to be substance to the faith. It's not some blind faith. Oh, I, I, just, I just believe. No, substance. And then what's the next word? Evidence. All right? Evidence of things unseen. It may be unseen, but there's evidence. What do you mean, Leo? Well, you know, you may not believe in electricity. But I would, I would discourage you from sticking your finger in that plug socket to, to find out whether it's there or not. All right? You may not be able to see it. But make no mistake about it, dear family, it is very real. You may not be able to see gravity. But you doubt his existence? I, I, I wouldn't encourage you to climb up on top of that building and try to find out if gravity is a reality or not. Can a scientist believe in God? Absolutely, 100% yes, because the God himself is the scientist. All these scientists and all these people who, you know, they're, what is a scientist? Do you know what a scientist is? A scientist is one who studies the signs of nature. So the scientist is no big deal. He, he's not like uh, the, the, the creator of anything. All he's doing is looking at the signs that God has put there for him to study and to get an idea of how it works or how it functions. And he can call himself a scientist because he's looking at the signs of nature. The signs of God. And God is the scientist. He's the super scientist. We In the nation of Islam, man, let me tell you something. We don't believe in no spooks. Okay? Everything that we believe can be mathematically proven at no limit of time, dear family. And you ought to have a religion or a way of life like that. Okay? That's provable, man. And that's then believable, okay? And it's something that you can literally grow into knowledge about and become strong because your foundation that you're standing on is backed by substance and evidence as opposed to some blind faith. I hope, dear family, that all of this is making some uh, kind of sense. All right, let's go to uh, clip number two uh, from our brother Ilya Rashad. Let's have a look. I can't, I'm really struggling to see the numbers here. Can you see? Can you see the numbers? I'm looking for 240. You can't see it? Next time. Oh, uh, so small. So small, isn't it? Wow. Yes, Andrew. Oh, 240 I'm looking for. Uh, hold on, so that's one, seven, seven, five, two, no, that's two, yeah. 240 I want. Okay, go back. Go, six, four, two, slow down. Two, four, 250. Go back. Right, stop. 254. Is that? Where? Go back slightly again. Just go right, stop. We've gone 152. Just go very 240, slowly. 240. Keep going slowly. Go that one. Yeah. Where are we? Stop to 22, 30. Okay, that's enough. Yeah, that's fine. The reality of Sorry about the that. mother will um, and the family. baby planes. So this is a question for those us of us believers particularly of newer believers and just the general public what are some of the guess if you want to call it basic specs or the uh general information that we have of the abilities of the, both the mother will and the baby plane okay. and this is a question 
from our brother asking about the specifications okay the basic specs of the the wheel or the wheels uh for brother Ilya rashad where can this information be found as you can start to conduct your research before i tell you some of the basic specs of the the wheel and the baby planes let me tell you where you can find the information because in research you always want to get to the source yes sir. and the credibility of that source yes, and sir. i say on your show to the world that it would be extremely negligent and hypocritical for oh. any so-called ufo researcher to claim to study the history and truth about the ufo phenomena and overlook the very person and source that come brought on. this truth to the world come on so to talk about ufos and exclude the nation of islam the most honorable elijah muhammad and the honorable minister farrakhan you have already nullified your so-called credibility as a researcher because right. you have not even dealt with the source of this phenomena you know, I mean, that would be like somebody talking about the history of bean pies, Come but, on. You don't, but you don't talk about the nation of Islam that brought bean pies to the world. You know what I mean? Come on. Yes, sir. Right, right. Yes, sir. And this is exactly what they have done as it relates to the UFO phenomena. The enemy has literally commandeered and hijacked the narrative when it comes to the truth about these planes. But back to the first part of your question regarding the specs in a nutshell what allah in person see nothing spooky about this so-called religion nothing spooky about this what master father muhammad showed physically showed to the honorable elijah muhammad was Uh, to try to cut that part short, it was made here on this earth. Yes, sir. The workforce consisted of um, hypocritical for historians and so-called UFO researchers to act like they don't know that the nation brought this truth to the world. Yes, it's sir. hypocritical for government officials now, even though they've been deceived too. But mm -hmm. those higher, higher up to act like they don't these planes like the mother wheel fly at unfathomable speed but the common factor is that they are all resemble the mother plane the dwelling place has been fulfilled uh, I, i'm just to explain uh, family i'm going back because i keep on i made a mistake and uh jumped ahead uh with the tape and i really want to elijah muhammad said it is a mile straight through come on Okay, and with this huge talk about the nation of Islam that brought bean pies to the world, you know what I mean? Oh, yes, sir. right, right. Yes, sir. And this is exactly what they have done as it relates to the UFO phenomena. The enemy has literally commandeered and hijacked the narrative when it comes to the truth about these planes, but back to the first part of your question regarding the specs in a nutshell what allah in person see nothing spooky about this so-called religion Come nothing on. spooky about this what master father muhammad showed physically showed to the honorable elijah muhammad was this huge circular plane which we call the mother wheel or the mother plane some call it the mother ship which is literally a half a mile by a half a mile. The Come Honorable on. Elijah Muhammad said it is a mile straight through. Come on. Okay. And yeah. with this huge circular plane that can fly in any direction at any time at unfathomable speeds, it is literally a city in the sky. Yeah. It is in fulfillment of all those prophecies that folks in religion have read about and hooped about and prayed about and shouted about Come on, Muhammad. but yes. now that prophecy those prophecies of god's heavenly dwelling place has been fulfilled in the real world 
And this is what the nation of Islam represents and points out to the rest of the world. So this huge mother wheel is accompanied by 1500 smaller circular planes. Now, we don't know, I don't recall anywhere where the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that all the baby planes are the same size. Right. So they could vary in size, but the common factor is that they are all resemble the mother plane in the sense that they are all circular in nature. Yes, sir. You know, whether it's an orbital type of circular nature, whether it's a, you know, kind of domish, it they're wheels. Yes, sir. And that's why they have been described by the prophets and by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as wheels, because they are more wheel shaped. Yes, sir. Uh, and these baby planes, as we call them, also known as bomber planes, because they are, uh, they do contain weaponry. Yes, sir. <laughs> right, right. Significantly advanced weaponry. Right. Um, and these planes, like the mother wheel, fly at unfathomable speeds with un inexplicable maneuverability that has just baffled the propulsion and aerodynamic engineers and scientists, as I'm certain yes, you know, yes, that has baffled the scientists and militaries and governments of the world. It's these planes that were first introduced to the modern world in person by God's representative, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. You know, and this is on record, by the way. This is why I say that it's so hypocritical for historians and so-called UFO researchers to act like they don't know that the nation brought this truth to the world. Yes, it's sir. hypocritical for government officials now, even though they've been deceived too, but those mm -hmm. higher, higher up to act like they don't know uh, where this comes from, please, hypocrites. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but back to, <laughs> back to yes, the sir. specs. Yes, sir. These planes uh, are from this earth. They are not Come from on. outer space. Come on, Muhammad. They were constructed yes, on this earth. On this earth, it took approximately 20 years uh, before it launched in 1929 in a very, very secretive project and at the helm of this project was God in person, Master Father okay. Muhammad. Yes, sir. The workforce consisted of a number of thousands of people operating on the construction of this plane and the smaller ones. However, they did not know the vast majority of the workers and skilled scientists working on this project did not know what the ultimate aim would be. They just had their parts to do and they were paid quite handsomely for doing their part. But it was Master Father Muhammad and the select few scientists under him. And Come by on. the way, these scientists are also what the scriptures refer to as angels. Mm. <laughs> Nothing spooky <laughs> over here now. Come Elijah on. Muhammad brought us a real actual fact mathematical theology that can be proven in the real world. So yes, uh, to try to cut that part short, it was made here on this earth by a human workforce Yes, sir. at the behest of Master Father Muhammad in fulfillment of what all of those prophecies that people in religion have read about yes, when sir. it comes to the coming of God. The coming of God is marked in the scriptures by his heavenly vessels, Come described on. as heavenly flying chariots, described as his throne in the sky. Right. The sky. You're reading it all this time. Come on. Described it. as a new Jerusalem, the city of the living God from above, described as a cloud by day and what appears to be a star or a pillar of fire in the right. nighttime. So yes, these refer to God's office space, but it also refers to God's uh, use of military weaponry to enact his judgment at oh. a certain time. So yes, I know I kind of went longer than I probably should have, but no, that, that, to try that, to squeeze it in there as best as right. I could, you're yes, dealing sir. with man-made planes that fly in the sky in the real world. And yes. we know the person and the people behind the operations of these planes that the world has become enamored with 
that they call UFOs. Right. ASA has that. Wow, beloved family. I mean, honestly, I, I, I hope I don't have to. I, I shouldn't have to be breaking down what Brother Ilya Rashad just shared with us. I hope we're listening. I hope we're taking it in for ourselves because there's just so much in what he just shared with us in terms of the specifications of the wheels, in terms of how they were built, in terms of the purpose for them, etc., etc. It's just incredible to me, dear family, that, you know, as a people, we have been so deceived, so hoodwinked in not having any knowledge about God and how God operates, okay? That there's military weaponry at the disposal of God. Just think about it, man, because, you know, we're terrified of this enemy with all these weapons, all these guns, but, I mean, he has no gun okay that can match the firepower of almighty god allah and these vessels these vehicles that are right now as we speak above our heads dear beloved family it is really really important that as a people we become empowered man that we understand that it's our time now and that where we may have thought that, you know, how, how will we ever get back to our position in our rulership of the planet? Because, you know, we love to talk about we were once kings and queens and we're coming from a, a royal bloodline, which is all true. But look at this terrible condition that we're in as a people today. How are we going to get back, dear family? Well, this is part of of the answer this is part of the solution that you are learning right here this evening the enemy cannot admit to the existence of a superior technology dear family and superior military capability that they do not control and that is in fact under the control of a supreme human Okay, supreme human being, God in person, and his people who are black people. Are you embarrassed learning this truth? Are you ashamed learning this truth? Are you one of those who resent the fact that God has come for you? And you would prefer if he came for everybody, including your enemy? including those who have absolutely ill-treated you and your parents and your parents before that and the grandparents and the great-grandparents. Because some of us are like that. Some of us are so wishy-washy. We're so cowardly that the very idea of God favoring us <laughs> makes us resentful. You know, we don't want to be special. We don't want to be a people chosen by God. And make no mistake about it, in our current condition, he's not choosing us because we're good. Okay, let's not get let's not get it twisted as I heard I've heard people say. You know, he's not choosing us because we're good, dear family. We are a destroyed people. We've been made very, very bad, if the truth be known. Okay? We have been made as corrupt in, and in some cases more corrupt than our open enemy. But this is the time for reform. Reform. Okay, we need a new form. We need a new posture. We need a new bearing. We need to stand upright and stop crawling on our bellies like snakes. Because that's where the enemy placed us. But now God has come to raise us from that abject condition from that shallow grave of ignorance into an upright living perpendicular this is the purpose dear family of the wheels this is the purpose of the coming of god it is a beautiful beautiful thing that we are experiencing and i pray that we are not disappointed in this desire 
of our Father who art in heaven to raise us to another level of existence. We have too long been down and out. Okay? And I, for one, I'm very happy. I'm very glad and I'm very thankful and grateful to Allah for this intervention in the affairs of black people, not just in North America, but throughout the Western Hemisphere, throughout the planet Earth. And so, dear family, you know, the time really has just run away, and there's so much. I mean, I haven't got through half of what I had planned uh, for this evening. Not, not nearly, okay? And so, um, really, just to begin to wind down for this evening's episode at this time let's check out a few more of our sponsors dear family don't forget to uh, bean pie was mentioned by brother uh, Ilya rashad saying that you know talking researching and coming up with talk around ufos and not including the nation of islam would be the same as talking about the famous bean pie without mentioning the nation of islam we are the introducers of both okay we introduced uh ufos to the consciousness of the members of the human family in in that we're the first ones to have spoken about them and articulated the reality of them as opposed to just somebody seeing something in the sky and not knowing what it is hence ufo unidentified flying object but for us as members of the nation of islam they are not unidentified they are fully identified based on the teachings of the most honorable elijah muhammad check out nia's bean pies visit instagram at nia's bean pie or call 07956 127975 dear family 07956 127975 it is a sweet that's healthy all at the same time okay too many of the sweet things that we consume are really unhealthy but this one is literally you can call it health food because of the in, uh, because of the, the nutritional value of the beans that we use in the construction of this bean pie deliberately using words like construction because believe me this if you when you consume these beans either in a savory fashion we in the nation of islam we have a lot of bean soup okay and you can do so many things with the beans but when you consume the beans either in the savory form or in the form of the bean pie um, you are literally helping to reconstruct reconstitute your body dear family so dear family don't forget once again visit www.natureshairproducts.co.uk and try the moisturizing hair and scalp oil as well as beard oil and other natural hair products that's what you will find when you visit nature's hair products visit www.p2bb.uk or London Study Group 19.org and order your proud to be black t shirts, caps, and mugs and say it like you mean it P2BB. In other words, proud to be black. Summer is here, dear family. You should be sporting your proud to be black t shirt, sprouting your uh, 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 proud to be black caps. Have a proud to be black mug at home where you can drink your coffee or your tea and support our attempts to re-establish black educational facilities for our children and also for ourselves as adults. Visit the tribe and pick up a garment. Okay, www.tribenation2019.com and pick up something to wear from the tribe dear family don't forget brothers and sisters visit our youtube channel the nation of islam london study group new lsg like you know hit that like button give us a thumbs up share 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 
please family you know send our videos when you visit our website you know go and look at some of those videos and then post them again yourself send them out we want the algorithms to recognize that our channel is very very busy and that you know there's lots going on um with the nation of islam um and lots going on with um the image and nation show so please visit our um site and you know help us um dear family to grow what it is that we are trying to do i've gone all dark here but it doesn't matter uh dear family we are nearly at the end just bear with us and also don't forget to subscribe all right join join our um subscription and be a part of this process um so that you will get notifications of when we're doing stuff in the future click the donation button to help us continue what we are doing brothers and sisters all right and you know going back now to just conclude um today's episode i wanted to um just basically um start the next part of our process today um and then we're gonna close on this and then we will pick it up again next week inshallah god willing go ahead yes. um Assalamu alaikum family. Um, thank you all for joining us this evening. Just to say, uh, I wanted to say uh, condolences to one of our um, followers, Ismaila Sise, who lost his mother. Oh. Yeah, she lost his mother today. Yeah. Okay. So condolences yes. to yourself and your family. And thank you for joining us this evening. Yeah, that, that, that speaks volumes. You know, you just lost your loved uh, one, your your mother. your mother, and you're here with us. So we send all of our love and condolences to you and the rest of your family, extended family. And we pray that Allah will comfort you in this time, uh, family of loss, okay? And that you will continue on and how we honor our uh, fallen family members, those who, pass away those who pass on to another realm of existence how we really honor them is to continue living our lives to the best of our ability and really you know retain them in our memory retain them uh, and really love honor and respect them for what they did uh, for us dear family so brothers and sisters thank you so much um, we're going to just go back now um, to, the, no, that, that, to try that, to squeeze it in there as best as right. I could. You're yes, dealing sir. with man-made planes that fly in the sky in the real world. And yes. we know the person and the people behind the operations of these planes that the world has become enamored with that they call UFOs. And say, has there been any black scientists to contact you on this? So that's the question uh, for next week. Has there been any black scientists that you have contacted, contact you yet on discussing this topic of the science of the mother plane? So brothers and sisters, we will, inshallah, God willing, pick it up next week. I hope you're enjoying this series on the wheel. Uh, let us know in the chat. Let us know. Uh, you know, when you come on next week. And also don't forget to let us know where you are viewing this from, okay? We're very interested in knowing all of the different parts of the world where people uh, tune in from to the Image and Nation show. Is there anything you can share with us um, on that, Claudia? Yes, we just thank our family from the Ivory Coast, USA. So thank um, Nightshade, Stephen Yankee, um Glenford Duffus, Nightshade, and of course DJ Mr. P, thank you once again. 
um, the Peace Trinity, Nighty Night. Did I say Black Mary? Thank you, Black Mary, for your comments. Felicia Horn, thank you as well. Mr. Rhodes, Dante Stewart, thank you all, family. And General Levador, thank you once again. We really appreciate your support and your time. Thank you very much and have a blessed. Just, ju just a quick question for some feedback. Uh, I want to just ask one question before we go. Uh, are you enjoying what we're sharing with you? Are you? Do you feel like you're getting something out of it? If that's the case, could you just do me a favor and put some ones, just put a one into the chat. Just put some ones in, those of you who are on YouTube. If you are um, feel like you're getting something, you're benefiting, uh, put some ones in the chat for me so that I can see how we are doing, dear family. Yes, we've got some ones. Okay, Mark we've got some ones X coming in. Brother Richard. Fantastic. Mr. P, thank you. Fantastic, fantastic. All right, family. Well, I want to thank you again. Cannot thank you enough for being here with us and uh, looking forward to next week, same time, same place, Thursday, 6.30 p.m. Thank you and good night. Assalamu alaikum, shalom, shalom. Ja, Rastafari. Greetings. Take care, family. Love you all.